Hi there, my name is Anthony Ward from Ant CGI, and welcome to this, the what is the third part in this uh, series for 3D World magazine. Just to quickly recap what we covered in parts one and two. So in part one, we took this uh, robot model and we basically applied a rig to it. This involved adding in a skeleton, like so, but then also creating IK systems, the ability to blend between IK and FK. So here you can see we can animate in IK. Well, we can animate in FK and then blend back to IK. We also added in stretchy limbs. So we can pull uh, the arm around like so. And the same can be say said for the legs and also the torso. So you see, we can move that around as well. You know, just to get a bit more sort of cartoony uh, feel to it. And then in part two, I'll just turn the skeleton off. What we did was we decided to enhance that initial rig by giving it more cartoony style controls. Just going to smooth the mesh because it just makes um, this look a lot nicer. So what these cartoon controls enabled us to do, if I just turn them on, if you can see here we've got tune controls, we can turn them on and then we end up with these three here. See, it just allows us to deform the arm in three separate sections. So this is good for um, for your animators to sort of, if they need the arms to bend, to sort of exaggerate a movement, or they basically just want the arm to have a lot more flexibility. Obviously, this is a robot character, so maybe he doesn't need that flexibility. But if you're working on a, a children's TV show, for example, you need that in there. Um, to just to give you more options. We also added in some extra controls just so that we could uh, could do some fun stuff like this. Like so. So that's just a brief recap of where we were before. So let's turn that off. So we're now in the third and final part and I was trying to think of what would be the best and most usable, well, most useful thing to add in, which would enhance this rig even further. I mean, there's there's all sorts of stuff that we could have added in, like soft IK, um, adding extra tools to adjust uh, the stretchiness, you know, being able to turn it on and off. Um, there's all sorts, of, like pinning the elbows and knees, things like that. You know, the list goes on and we could, you know, I could do a different tutorial every month, you know, for the next 12 months covering a different thing that we could enhance this character with. But the one thing that really stands out for this is the lack of any controls for his feet. Yeah, we can move the leg around and we can sort of pose the foot like so. But if we wanted to make him walk, it's going to be quite difficult to sort of have it back on the heel but then you've got to make sure that pivot stays in the same place so you'll have to move it like so and then you're going to have to animate the foot moving like that bend the toe up you, you know it just makes it a lot more complicated and characters like this one of the fundamental things they're going to need to do is move by you know move their legs while they're walking or running or jumping or you know we need that flexibility in here so for an animator at the moment this is just ridiculous. It will take them a long time to animate the feet, whereas we could now just go in and create some controls which would do that all for them. So basically that's what this third part in the series is going to cover. Now rather than just do the basic uh, reverse foot, which I'm sure a lot of you have already seen, it's been around for as long as I can remember, um, you know, using a couple of IK handles, you know, just to allow you to pose a few joints and then you use set driven keys just to rotate the toe, you know, it's a pretty basic setup. So I'm not going to waste your time by doing that with this. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to 
create more of an enhanced, well, more of an advanced, I should probably say, um, version of the foot setup using utility nodes. And because we're using utility nodes, we can also then add in an extra layer of controls, which will allow us to dictate how the foot rotates, how the foot rolls, you know, at which point the toe needs to bend, how far back the heel goes, you know, so we've got a lot more control, which would be better for the animator because it will allow them to dictate what kind of foot they're animating. So, so basically, yeah, that is what this uh, third part is going to be about. So enough of me sort of waffling on, let's just jump in and start to build this, uh, this new foot rig. So I'm just going to switch on the skeleton just so you can see what we're working with. Now, at the end of the last, um, at the second part of this series, we didn't have these extra joints in for the feet. Now, what I've done is I've just, before I've started this, I've just gone in and added a, jo uh, a, a joint for the ball, called left ball, and a joint which dictates where the end of the toe will be, just called left toe. And you'll also see here, I've got a left toe IK joint and a left toe FK joint. So we've got the main skeleton, and then we've got two other, um, versions of this skeleton, an IK and an FK one, which allows the main one to blend between the two, which you'll remember if is what we covered in part one of this series. All I've done is added a couple of extra joints to that, and that's going to allow us to then rig the foot. So I just added the joints in, and just if you want to revert, refer back to part one, where we were creating these initial joints, just go in and add in a couple of extra, parent constrain them, uh, the IK joint and the FK joint to the main joint so it should look like this and then use the sort of reverse nodes um, the reverse node and the uh, IK FK switch to sort of blend between the two now I'm not going to go over that here because we covered all that in part one of this series so please refer back to that or just load this starter file and go from here but basically, yeah, we've got two extra joints that are added in and I've weighted this part of the foot to this ball joint. So as you can see, we've now got the uh, flexibility to rotate the toe um, and the ball, which is exactly what we need when we add in the foot roll. So I'm going to hide that skeleton now. I'm just going to turn on the rig systems because that will allow us to select the IK joints here. But just to make sure, I'm going to, we don't want to accidentally select the FK joint, so I'm just going to hide that for now. So we've got our IK there and our IK there. And just to keep things simple, I'm just going to work on the left foot for this uh, tutorial. You can easily just reapply everything that I've demonstrated to the right foot. So the first thing we need to do, well, obviously after we've added these joints in, we need to create a couple of new IK handles. So I'm just going to go to our skeleton, create IK handle. And what we need is we just want a single chain solver. Oop, deselected it by accident. So I'm going to just select the left, oh. That's selected that wrong joint again. So let's let's do it an easier way and select them in the outliner. So select the IK handle tool. I want it to go from the ankle and then we hold down control and select the ball IK. So that's the first one. And then we want another one going from the ball IK to the toe. So you see there we've got the two IK handles. So let's rename these to let, um, left ball IK handle and left toe IK handle just so we know which side they are and what exactly it is that they uh, represent. So we've got those in and as you can see we can move them around and that's going to 
flip, uh, flap up and down the toe joint and that's going to affect the ball joint. So you can already sort of get an idea of where we're going with the sort of foot controls. So we've got our IK handles in, but now what we need to do is we need to create a series of groups because what's going to happen is the main attributes which control the foot roll are going to basically work off a series of uh, groups and they're going to rotate around uh, the pivots that you dictate. So we need, um, yeah, we need a series of groups. So seven groups, but we need them to all be inside each other. So what I'm going to do is just press Control G. So we get one group here, which is just named null. And we're going to create another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I just pressed Control G again. And we just need to rename these. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste the names in just to save a little bit of time. So we've got root pivot, heel pivot, inner pivot, outer pivot, end pivot, ball pivot, and left foot ankle pivot. So we need another group. This one's going to be called left foot toe pivot. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use our middle mouse button and drag that up to left foot end pivot like so. So that is sat underneath the left foot end pivot. Now it's quite important that this hierarchy is like this because um, basically how things rotate dictate how other things rotate. So just try and keep your um, hierarchy similar to this. You can move a few things around if you find that your configuration uses certain pivots more than others, but you, you know, that's up to you. But this is what I would recommend just for now. So we have our groups, but the problem is all the pivots are at the world root here. See, as we move through them all, which isn't ideal. Um, so we just need to change where those pivots are, because obviously we're going to be rotating around them. So if they're all at the world root, everything's just going to go wrong. So let us press insert on the left foot root pivot. And I'm just going to hide the polygons for now. I'm going to hold down V uh, and with my middle mouse button, I'm just going to drag that up and snap it to where the ankle is. So I'm going to show the polygons again. So now we're moving down to the heel pivot and we want this to rotate around where the back of the foot is. So I've still still got insert uh, pressed and that's allowing me to edit the pivot point. So I'm just moving it to the back of the foot because that's where the heel is. And if you think we want the, the foot to rotate back, so that's the point where it's going to rotate from. We also need to move it along as well in the X axis. So because we're focusing just on the feet, I'm just going to hide some of this other geometry, which is just getting in the way. We only want to see the feet. So back to the heel pivot, press insert. And I'm just going to focus on this top view. So we can see the back of the foot is here. So it's going to move that over. Now the inner pivot. So again, this, this is going to be used to allow the foot to bank from left to right. So we want it to be on the inside of the foot. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inner and the outer pivots and move them both the same. I'm going to move that down to about here because that's the widest part of the foot. And I selected them both because I want them both to be in the same position on the Z axis. So then we just select the outer foot pivot, move that over there like so. Now we're just going to go over to the end pivot and I'm going to move that to the middle of the foot. But this is now going to go down to the end of the toe. So just there and then back to the side view. Just make sure that's up the uh, on the base. 
Now the ball pivot. Oop. So I want this to snap to where the uh, the joint is. So I'm just going to hide the polygons again. I'm going to hold down V and snap that to where the ball of the foot is. The ankle. Obviously that goes where the ankle is. And the toe, we're going to put that back where we're going to put that where the ball is as well. Now we put the toe pivot group back where the ball is because if you can see if we rotate that one oh, nothing happens yet because we've not adjusted the hierarchy so I'm getting a bit ahead of myself um, so let's leave that for now basically we'll adjust the hierarchy later but it will the IK handle will be inside that group so when you rotate that group it will rotate from that point there and you'll get the toe rotating up and down but like I say, we're just getting ahead of ourselves for now. So we've got our group set up with their pivots. We've got the IK handles in. So now we need to create some uh, controls that are going to allow us, you know, to control the various, uh, you know, things we want the foot to do. So let's select the left foot IK control. We want to put the controls on here because we only want these available while you're animating in IK when we don't want them available if you're working in FK if it was going to be available in both IK and FK I put it on this control because that's a global control but we just want it on here so let's just go to add attributes and I'm just going to create sort of a divider so I'm just going to do a few underscores change that to enum and then change green to pose out of that so we've sort of got a divider which is going to separate the different uh, attributes so let's go to float and the first one we're going to create is roll we've got it on a float now with this one we are going to set a minimum and maximum uh, yep Minimum is going to be minus 10 and maximum is going to be 20. I'm going to add that. That's just there so that we can have limits to how far the foot will roll back and roll forwards. It just stops the animator going too far. You, you will have control over where the end of the foot, well, where those poses end. But this just means that there's like a fixed uh, point. Right, let's just add in the rest of these attributes so we want a uh, bank next now these I'm not going to bother adding uh, any restrictions on heel heel twist add toe twist add toe tap add so they're the main sort of attributes that the animator will use so now we're going to create another section and this is going to be where all the attributes are that you can tweak to set it up for the particular foot that you're using so let's again create another divider so we'll just add some more um, underscores in another enum get rid of that call this settings like so we'll add that in and then back to float and we're going to go to flex roll back roll end bank amount and to straight angle So there are main attributes. So toe flex, uh, well, I'll just go over them as we're, you know, wiring them up and adding them in, rather than just repeat myself as we're going along. So there, we've got our groups, we've got our attributes, we've got the IK handles, 
and we are pretty much ready to go. What we do need to do before we start to uh, add in the, uh, the nodes and start building the networks is to just adjust the hierarchy. Like you saw earlier, the, uh, the IK handle didn't move when I rotated the toe pivot. So we just need to fix the hierarchy now. So let's just reveal where that is. So here we've got our foot control with the uh, locator, which indicates where the end of the stretchiness is and the IK handle. So I'm just going to move this foot root pivot under the actual left foot IK control. So it's sitting underneath this control here and it will move around with it. So left ball IK handle needs to be moved up to where the left foot ball pivot is. So we're going to just going to group that under there. And then the left toe IK handle goes under the left toe pivot. What we also need to do is move the these two nodes, the stretch end and the actual IK handle under the ankle pivot. And that just means that as the foot moves, even if, even if we're not moving this control, as the foot moves, the leg is going to be influenced as well. So let me just demonstrate now. With the IK handle under that pivot there, we can adjust the rotation and that's going to make the foot move up and down. If we've got the heel, if we go onto the heel and rotate Y, you can see we've got that motion. The inner, you can see we've got that motion and the outer. So you can sort of get the idea. Let me just bring back the geometry so you can see. So you can see we've got basically, we've got the foundations in there. So what we need to do now is connect these attributes to these groups so that to animate, all you need to do is adjust roll, adjust bank, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So I think what we'll do is we will just take a break here and we will pick things up in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you have any questions and tell me what future videos you would like to see. And why not say thanks and also earn exclusive rewards with a small donation via my coffee page. As always, remember to like this tutorial and subscribe to my channel. And remember to hit that bell icon so you're kept up to date with notifications on future videos and posts. This is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.